Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional board review lectures. Today's podcast is going to talk about antibiotics such as beta-lactams. Let's start with penicillin G. Penicillin G and penicillin V can be used for streptococci, anaerobes, meningococci, clostridia, leptospirosis, as well as syphilis. Now, Penicillinase resistant penicillins such as oxacillin, nafacillin, and diclofacillin can be used for staph oris, which is also called MSSA, and streptococcal infections. So, just to review one more time, if the boards asks you how do you treat syphilis, how do you treat clostridia, how do you treat leptospirosis, and how do you treat meningiococci and how do you treat streptococci then the answer here is going to be pen G or pen V if the board talks to you about the best treatment for staphylococcus aureus you're going to be going with the oxacillin nafacillin and the dicloxacillin now let's talk about ampicillin what medication would you use to treat Haemophilus, E. coli, Enterococci, Listeria, and Proteus mirabilis? The answer is ampicillin because ampicillin is an extended spectrum penicillin. One more time, ampicillin is the extended spectrum penicillin and it covers Haemophilus, which is the key bug that you want to remember. E. coli, Listeria, Proteus, and Enterococci. As we mentioned before, dicloxacillin, nafacillin, and oxacillin are used mainly for MSSA and streptococcal infections. Penicillin G and V are used for meningiococci, clostridia, and syphilis, but they're not used for Haemophilus, Listeria, and Proteus, as well as E. coli. So this ampicillin is a key medication in the extended spectrum penicillins that you would want to remember. And another similar extended spectrum penicillin that has a unique property is called ticaracillin, which is um, a extended spectrum penicillin. Similarly, piperacillin and mislocillin. Okay, those three drugs. Ticaracillin, piperacillin, and mislocillin. These are used in the treatment of Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And in addition to this, uh, the bugs we just talked about previously with ampicillin, such as H. influenza, E. coli, enterococci, listeria, and uh, proteus. There are medications that are combinations, such as amoxicillin clavunate, uh, ampicillin and sulbactam, piperacillin and tazobactam, and ticaracillin and clavulinate. These can be used in the treatment of MSSA, Klebsiella, E. coli, Proteus, Pseudomonas, um, Streptococci, H. flu, and again, these combinations have good anaerobic coverage. That's the key point here. If you want good anaerobic coverage, go with the combination. Now, let's talk about imipenem, meropenem, urtapenem. What are they used for? Well, it has a unique property. They're used to treat MRSA and some gram-negative rods and enterococci and anaerobes. So gram-negative, MRSA, and anaerobes, you are going to pick the penems. If the board of question asks you what is the best treatment to treat a bug that is a gram-negative rod and it's aerobe, then you're going to choose Aztrionam, okay? Aztrionam is going to be your answer for that. Finally, let's review some of the high yield medications that you may see um, on the complex board exam in terms of the cephalosporins. Well, the first generation will cover E. coli, Klebsiella, and methicillin sensitive Staphylococcus aureus. So the uh, mnemonic here can be M E K. The examples of this are cephalaxin. Cephalothin and Cephazolin. 
for second generation, you're going to cover Haemophilus influenza, which is the key. Uh, cefoxetine and uh, cefotetan can be used to treat intra-abdominal infections and prophylaxis prior to surgery. So those are the two key uses for second generation. Now for the third generation, the big deal is with pseudomonas, especially cefaxidine. So cefaxidine treats pseudomonas. And the fourth generation, cefepime is known because it can treat bugs in the gram-negative category. So neutropenic fever patients typically benefit from cefepime. Finally, let's review um, a couple of the other high-yield medications you may see on the board exam, and that is vancomycin. Well, vancomycin, um, its oral form is used to treat C. diff, and it can also be used in the treatment of MRSA. What is macrolides like azithromycin used for? Well, as we know, they're used for uh, respiratory tract infections caused by atypical organisms like mycoplasma, and it's given once a week or twice a week depending on the severity. And also um, aminoglycosides like tobramycin, amikacin. These are used in the treatment of infections caused by aerobe gram negative organisms. They can also be used synergistically with beta lactams in the treatment of some gram positive organisms. Now what are fluoroquinolones used for? Well, they have a broad spectrum property and they're used to treat community acquired pneumonia and urinary tract infection. So CAP and UTIs, levofloxacin, gadifloxacin, and ciprofloxacin. And how about clinda and metronidazole? Well, metronidazole is for intra-abdominal infections such as C. diff colitis, and clindamycin is for diabetic foot. Clindamycin is also used for dental prophylaxis in patients with penicillin allergies. Finally, let's talk about our last drug here, linezolid and quinoprisin dalfopristin. They can be used in the treatment of MRSA and VRE, vancomycin resistant enterococcus infections. That was a board review for the various high-yield antibiotic properties that you should be aware of for the board exam. Please visit ComlexFlashcards.com, that's www.ComlexFlashcards.com, for complete update on the Comlex and the USMLE board exam, as well as a daily blog that will help you get through medical school. Good luck in your preparation for the boards.